Hello and welcome back to another studio vlog. I decided to take all of last week off so I can get ahead of the game with Patreon. This was the week to do it. If I waited any longer, I knew that I was going to start freaking out over trying to get ready for Nadashikan. So I decided not to film anything. I just art, art, art arting one thing after the other after the other not only that i decided that i wanted to draw my own original art print to debut at nadashi Khan. so this is my biggest art print it's a full page which is eight and a half by eleven i usually don't go bigger than five by seven because i'm not sure how i would ship an eight and a half by eleven art print but i figured since i would have two eight by ten fan art prints and Adashikon, I should at least try to have one original art print. I also spent that same week to work on that. What did I do last week with Patreon? I created the digital download. The digital download is a weekly planner with a spring theme. I really love this layout and I would like to have digital downloads in my Etsy shop in the future. If I do do that, this is the layout I'm going to have. I also did the Pinnacle Club goodie and this month, the Pinnacle Club goodie is going to be 60 loose memo sheets. They are a fun shape and they're spring theme, of course, as flowers, mushrooms, bees, and so on on there. I really love how this turned out. The panel club members would get white and pink backgrounds, and you're also gonna get a three inch and two inch versions. I love having smaller memo sheets sometimes because sometimes that's all you need. Not only that, I think it'll be fun to decorate your journal, planner, and I really love how it turned out. The Pendle Club goodie for this month changed a couple of times, but I'm really happy that in the end, this is what I chose to do. By the end of all this, I was on the verge of burnout. Usually when I do art, there's a little bit of downtime, maybe a day or a few days or so on, but this week was an exception. When I don't have a convention or something else at the same month to prepare for, I just do all this throughout the month. Thankfully, this all finished when it did. I think if I had to do anything else more, I would have been burnt out, but we finished and we're good. And I'm happy that I took that time to just work on Patreon and not worry about creating a studio vlog for that week. Thursday, so it's a case of the 
I decided to try laminating my sticker sheets. If you watch my past few vlogs, you might have seen a vlog last year where I said I was having some trouble with my sticker sheets. I found that for some reason, even though I had figured out the correct cut settings for them, some of the stickers were kiss cut and the others were not fully kiss cut at all. So I deactivated some of the sticker sheets from my Etsy shop and I finally decided it was time to figure this stuff out. I thought that maybe laminating them would actually help with cutting my stickers. Not only that, I've been thinking about laminating my sticker sheets. I don't think I will be laminating my rainy day sticker sheet, which features Jackie the fluffy rabbit. And that is meant to be like a small journal planner sticker for decorating a spread in your book. So I think for those type of stickers, I'm not going to laminate them. But for my bigger sticker sheets, I am going to do that. I really like the look of this matte vinyl laminate that I'm using. I have a link down below to the one that I am using if you're interested. It gives the stickers a pearlescent kind of look and I think it looks really really nice. It also has texture on it which I was worried about at the start. After seeing it in person and touching it, I actually really like it. I wish it had a slightly softer feel to it but it's not a big deal. That's just me hoping for the most perfect laminate but for now I am quite content with this one. I don't know if all matte laminates are like this but unlike glossy this one doesn't really get scratched at all it is a lot harder to use because unlike the glossy laminate it doesn't glide as easy when you're using your ruler to put onto the sticker sheet but I found a really easy way I don't roll it up anymore as I'm pulling the matte laminate I have to make sure that my ruler is along the very edge of wherever it's getting pulled and that allows the laminate to get onto the sticker sheet without adding any bubbles. I'm a lot more confident from the last few times that I've done this and it's just really really nice to finally figure out how to do this. I also reactivated the listing for my sticker sheets on Etsy. Some of the sticker sheets have the glossy option, the others have the matte option. I didn't feel the glossy laminate left, so I decided to go ahead and just use them. I've been asked what is the benefits of laminating your stickers. Depending on which laminate you use, there could be multiple benefits. For example, for the matte laminate that I'm using, it makes your stickers waterproof, which all laminates do, but this one also makes your stickers UV resistant. And that means if the sunlight gets onto it, it won't discolor the sticker. I decided to do just four of my sticker sheets, the most recent ones, and the ones that would be on a dashcon would be my Mr. Sun Happy Mail sticker sheet, my Berwin Halloween sticker sheet, the Strawberry Frog Girl sticker sheet, and the Autumn sticker sheet. Also along with the Rainy Day sticker sheet, which again is not laminated. It's a really huge sigh of relief to finally figure out the kiss cut settings for this. From now on, my standard size sticker sheets will be laminated. husband has been a really really huge help with helping me figure out a table setup for Nadashi Khan. We decided to use velcros to attach the white squares to the grid cube. It's very strong, very sturdy. My husband did a great job with figuring this stuff out for us. While he was doing that, I decided to get all the buttons together how I wanted it in the containers. I am going to be using the containers I use for my sticker storage for my buttons. My buttons are 1.25 inches so they're pretty small. When you look down at them you can see all the characters. They're all separated really nicely. There's three empty slots left so before the convention starts I'm going to make up three more button designs to fill up the space. My husband is using zip ties to attach grid cubes into the center of one of our displays. 
because I don't have that many accessories, I don't really need all the good cubes that's on the side. This was our way to still make the setup similar on both sides, but not change it too much so that they looked kind of off. I wanted them to be balanced. My most favorite part of my layout is possibly my stationary area. I was planning to use my nail polish rack for my stickers, but then I didn't really like how they look like. My stationary items fit on there perfectly. The only thing is I don't have room for my sticker book, so I probably have my sticker book somewhere else on my table. I am using the Captain Froggo cutout to hold my sticker sheets and it's perfect. It's just being held by two clips. It holds my sticker sheets from bending backwards because the acrylic now polish rack doesn't have that tall of a backing for each section. The most difficult part of the whole thing of course is figuring out where everything is going to go. There were a lot of changes though throughout this process. It was very very stressful because you have to make sure everything fits. Thankfully I figured out a way to do my stickers because I was having a huge problem figuring out how I was going to put my art prints on my display. Especially since I added an original full print. I had less space for my smaller prints. My smaller prints are 5x5 five five inches or 4x6 inches. My grid cubes are pretty huge they're 14 inches these 14 inch grid cubes have been a huge headache but a savior at the same time <laughs> i was able to fit all my prints and all my taika stickers onto three tiers perfectly of these grid cubes hello everyone it is friday march 17th it is a week before NadashiCon and I'm excited and I'm not as stressed as I think I could be but I think the fact that my husband and I have finally kind of figured out or mostly figured out how the table setup is going to be has relieved a lot of that stress. I've received all the information I need for the convention so if you happen to be going to NadashiCon I will be at table 71. I'm super super excited for this. It'll be my first three-day convention. I've been told that NadashiCon is a very comfortable and busy enough convention. I don't exactly know what that means. I know that it's not a huge convention. It's probably the perfect three-day convention to start. Yeah, I've seen some of my tables so I'm about 95% sure that's how it's going to look like. There might be some changes but I don't think it's going to be too much of a big change. I'm gonna buy some fabric and my brand colors to cover the table with. I wasn't planning to do that, but I thought that if I'm going to take this seriously, I need to just go ahead and buy the stuff and make my table as nice as I possibly could. I apologize if this vlog is short. I don't know how long it will be. I didn't talk in any part of it except this part and it's going to be a lot of voiceover. So I hope that at least it's still a fun vlog to watch. Next week's vlog will be about the final preparations for NadashiCon and the con itself. That will be it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!